uh, Lash Concorla, listening to the Taoiseach's comments yesterday about how he would not have chosen this. Lash uh, Concorla, <laughs> uh, sorry, but I, I've just lost some time because of the interruptions. Um, listening to the Taoiseach yesterday about um, how he would not have chosen a controversy like this as a welcome for him into office, uh, I couldn't help but be reminded of Albert, Albert Reynolds' statement of regret which led to the resignation of Harry Whelan from the High Court. And undoubtedly there are strong historical parallels, but in a way this appointment is even more controversial and tawdry than the one in 1994-95. That, of course, led to a change in the law and new procedures being introduced in respect of the appointment uh, to the bench of um, the, uh, an Attorney General. And, unfortunately, uh, the lessons that were learned in 95 um, have not been taken on board by this government, and those mistakes have been repeated to a large extent. And listening here this evening to the introductory remarks from Minister Flanagan, um, I was surprised that you didn't remind him of the purpose of this uh, session here tonight. This is about statements on the procedures covering the, the, the judicial appointment. And yet we heard precious little from Minister Flanagan about those procedures. I mean, that is the controversy. We want to know what happened over recent weeks in respect of this controversial judicial appointment. And you gave us precious little information about that. You talked about what you're going to do in the future you didn't provide the kind of information that's required. And I certainly hope that Minister Fitzgerald, when she's speaking, fills in those many gaps which we're waiting to hear about. Now, um, I think it, there are a key number of questions that need to be responded to tonight. Um, we're told that three High Court judges applied for this position. Um, I hope the Minister just confirms that, that that's the fact, because nobody has actually confirmed that. And yet we don't know anything, if that is the case, we don't know anything about what happened to those expressions of interest. Who was it who received them? Were they sent to the then Attorney General? Did you, as Minister for, for Justice, Minister Fitzgerald, did you actually see those applications? Who else in the Department saw them? What consideration was given to those applications? Were they rated at all? Were they considered at all? Did you inform the Taoiseach of those applications? And did you inform your uh, cabinet colleagues about those applications? And where are they now? Did you just bin them or did you actually use some kind of uh, transparent process to consider them? Uh, another point, a question that arises is, how did it come about that contact was made with Aris Anugtharan by somebody representing government on Sunday morning of all times, uh, uh, giving notice of a warrant of appointment, requesting the appointment of uh, the, this new uh, judge of, of the uh, Court of Appeal, um, and that that would be expedited. Now, who actually issued that instruction? The Taoiseach seemed to imply that it, it just happened, that somebody in the Department of Justice or his department or something. I can't believe that that would happen. I can't believe that a senior official from any government department would take it on themselves on a Sunday morning to make a move like this. And how convenient it is that that appointment was expedited. How convenient that, you know, the Taoiseach and others in government were then in a position to plead the separation of powers when we tried to probe all of the grubby circumstances surrounding this appointment. I would also say that it is quite legitimate for members of this House to raise concerns about issues surrounding the handling of various um, concerns relating to Garda whistleblowers.
Um, there were question marks over several people associated with government and in government about how, how they've handled that. There is serious public concern about the role that the Attorney General of the day particularly played in all of that. There is serious concern about the changing of the witness statement for the, the Fennelly Commission. And most importantly, there is serious concern about the fact that it would now seem that Maura Whelan will be exempted from having to go before the Charlton Inquiry and give it evidence. That is not accountability, Minister, and I think this whole affair is shameful on your part.